Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today for another one of my videos. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you what I've been making in January. So I've got a few sewing makes to share with you and one knitting make too, and I'll include the knitting make at the end of the video in case um, knitting isn't your thing. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to chatting through what I've been sewing in January. But as usual, I thought I'd start the video with what I'm wearing today. So it's quite a sunny day here today in the south of England. It seemed like it was quite cold overnight, but now the sun's shining, it isn't too cold. And I've got on a handmade top and a handmade skirt combination. And the top, first of all, is um, one of my favourite relaxed jersey top patterns. It's this pattern here. It is the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. It's a really nice, um, quite close fitting jersey top. Um, I usually make it in a cotton jersey. It's quite nice and comfy and a bit cosy too. It's got a couple of different variations. There's sort of the standard version that's quite close fitting with this nice scoop neckline. You can make it with long sleeves or a shorter sleeve, but you can also add a couple of little features. There's an option to add a little bit of ruching here at the front. Also, you can make the sleeves a bit more voluminous. There's a sleeve piece with this ruching to add a bit of volume at the shoulders. So yeah, quite some nice variations on it. But the version I'm wearing today is a bit of a hack. I changed the neckline of it. So instead of the scoop neckline, I borrowed the neckline from another pattern to turn it into a boat um, necked version of the Agnes top. And the neckline I borrowed from a free pattern, which is the Mandy Boat Tea Pattern by Tasuti Fabrics. I think it's just free to download if you go on their website. I'll link it down below. I don't remember whether you have to sign up for their newsletter, but I remember it was quite straightforward. But it's a really nice neckline to that top and it's quite a nice finish to it. You sort of turn under the fabric and you add some um, sort of twin needle top stitching, which gives it a really nice finish. So if you fancy a boat neck um, top, I'd recommend it. Oh, if you're not in the mood to sew in a, a neck band to get it to lie flat, um, yeah, it's a good one for that too. It's a really nice, um, relaxed, comfy top to wear. I've got the long sleeve version on today and um, the jersey fabric is a cotton jersey and I think I got it from Lily and Mimi Fabric Shop, but it was a long time ago. I don't think they'll probably have it in stock still now, but it's quite cute. It's got this sort of creamy base with all these speckles on and these red stripes. It's just quite a nice, comfy one to wear. In terms of sizing, the Agnes top is available in a UK 6 to a UK 20. And I think it's quite true to size. So I think I went with my measurements on this one. It's quite a close fitting top. So yeah, that's why I'm wearing on my top. And then I've teamed it with a red skirt and the skirt I made using this pattern here, which is the tulip skirt pattern by Sew so Over It. It's a really nice little skirt pattern for either a mini skirt type or version, or there's also a just above the knee version too. But it's got some pretty features. It's called the tulip skirt because it's got a tulip shape to it and which you make by putting in these sort of folded pleats that's sort of on the slant here to give this sort of pretty tulip shape. And the back, it's got back darts and an invisible zip. And the waist, I think, is designed to sit pretty much at your natural waist. It's a nice skirt. I'll stand up so I can just give you a little peek of it, but I'll put a picture up in a moment so you can see the full skirt. And I made my version in a cotton twill fabric. It's a Robert Kaufman Ventana twill that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. I can't remember the exact shade of red it is, but I'll try and include a link to it down below if it's still in stock at Semi Sunshine or if I can find it elsewhere, because I think that the Robert Kaufman Ventana twills are quite readily available. But it's quite nice. It's got a bit of structure to it um, and a bit of, yeah, it kind of holds its shape. So it's quite nice because it holds the tulip shape. I'd made my first version quite a long time ago in a quite a lightweight needle cord and it didn't hold the shape of the tulip so well. But it's got nice pockets um, in the skirt, so it's quite practical. Um, and it's quite a comfy one to wear. And I'll put up a picture of me wearing it. This pattern, like the Agnes pattern, is available in sizes UK 6 to 20. So again, it's not got the biggest size range ever. And I think it's quite true to size. I think I went with my waist and hips measurements and it came out just fine. So it's quite a nice combination to wear. I like the red. Um, that cheers me up always when I put a red, bit of red on. I do like that colour. So that was what I'm wearing. So now let me move on to what I've been making in January. And the first thing I made in January is something that I've been wanting to have in my wardrobe for ages. And it's a lightweight dressing gown for summer. So it's not exactly seasonal for January, but it's something I've been missing for a while. And I knew I wanted to make one and the perfect fabric, what I thought was the perfect fabric came along. So I decided to snap it up and I got sewing. And for my dressing gown, I use this pattern here which is a new pattern company to me. And the pattern company is Tammy Handmade and it's the Tammy Handmade Haley Robe. And it's just quite a st straightforward, simple dressing gown pattern. I'll show you the line drawings so you can see. You can make it, um, it's designed so you can make it either as a sort of wintry dressing gown in a really thick fleecy fabric, 
or a lightweight dressing gown. It's got two different lengths to it, a sort of longer length and a shorter length. It's got a tie, you can add on patch pockets, it's got a dropped shoulder. So I just thought it'd be quite a nice simple dressing gown shape because I didn't want anything super fancy <laughs> or anything with like, billowing sleeves that I'd end up dipping in my porridge or anything like that. So yeah, that's what I decided to go for. I do also have the named clothing larger dressing gown and I was originally planning to make my lightweight dressing gown using that pattern. But then when I read online about it, it seemed like it came up quite oversized and I thought I wouldn't mind an oversized cozy dressing gown for winter. But for summer, I wanted something a little bit more fitted. So I thought the Tammy handmade pattern would fit the bill. So I'll show you my version. Oh no, I'll talk about the sizing first actually. The sizing goes from a UK 6 to a UK 24 and the largest size is for bust 49 inches. But now I'll show you my version and I'm really, really pleased with it. I made it in this really cool fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother. And it's one of their own Fabric Godmother fabrics. And they often um, have fabrics printed based on vintage prints they found in a vintage archive. So this is one of those prints. And it's called Tiger Mountain. It's really lovely and with this large scale tiger print with a teal background. It's got little stars on it too, so it's super cute. And this is a cotton lawn. It's a really lovely silky cotton lawn. I think it'll be perfect for wearing as a dressing gown. So it's really nice and lightweight and it's got a bit of drape to it too. So I really enjoyed sewing this one up. It was a lot of fun. I wouldn't usually go for such a bold print, but I thought for a dressing gown, it'd be lots of fun. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased how it came out. So in terms of sizing on this one, I went for the size six. So the size six measurements are for a bust of 31 inches and a waist of 24 inches and hips of 34 inches. My measurements are 32, 26, 36, which will kind of put me in between a size six and eight for the bust and then a size eight for the waist and hips. But I decided to size down because the pattern said it was a fairly loose fitting dressing gown. The one thing I do feel the pattern misses is finished garment measurements. I think that would have been quite useful to know because I do often look at those just to get an idea of how much ease there is in a garment. So that was a shame, but I decided to go for the size six and it has turned out okay. And it is a fairly neatly fitted dressing gown how it's turned out. I made a couple of adjustments. I lengthened the sleeves by a couple of inches and I'm glad I did. I often do a sleeve lengthening adjustment for me because I do have arms that are along the long side, I guess. And I did need the extra two inches. And the other thing I did was I went for the version A, the shorter version, but I actually lengthened it by about five inches. So my versions kind of ended up just around my knees length, um, which I kind of wanted because I thought if I'm sitting down on a cold chair, then it will cover my um, cover the chair up um, if I've got kind of pyjama shorts on just to keep me kind of cosy. Yeah, on a, on a morning, on a chillier morning in summer. That was my <laughs> rationale anyway. So I'm quite happy with the length. I'll put a picture up so you can see the length and how it looks. And I really am happy with how it turned out. It was an enjoyable sew. It was quite a straightforward sew. I think the most time I spent on this one was making sure the tigers were placed right. As I would note, the pattern states you need a lot more fabric than you actually do need. So you, if you look at the, how much fabric the pattern requires, you can get away with less, I think. But I was quite glad I went with the pattern amount of fabric because I did need a bit extra just to make sure I had a good tiger placement. So yeah, it took a while figuring that out. And you add a little hook at the top, which is quite handy. Um, it's got waist ties here. I did find that the, the waist tie loops came out quite long, so I shortened those a little bit. And then I a couple of adjustments I made with this one with the construction is I decided to interface this collar piece because there wasn't any interfacing specified on the collar piece, but I thought it might be a bit too floppy and wouldn't hold its shape well enough without interfacing. So I just interface of one side of the collar piece just to give it a little bit more structure and hold its shape around the front. And I used like a lightweight fusible interfacing for that. And the other thing I did was the pattern specifies you kind of sew on this front collar piece by just attaching it to the main fabric and then sewing the whole thing on in one piece and then overlocking the seam. Well, I decided just to sew on the front piece of the collar and then I turned it under and I slip stitched down the inside just to give a really neat finish. So it's kind of all the seams are contained there. So I'm quite pleased that finish and it was quite enjoyable doing that bit of hand stitching to sort of secure the collar on rather than just attaching it as one piece and overlocking the seam on the inside. So those are a couple of little variations I made but it's a really um nice dressing gown I really love it I love the print it was a lot of fun I think this fabric is still in stock at Fabric Godmother so I'll link it down below I think there might be another version of the fact I think it might be available in another fabric too maybe like a viscose crepe or something else too I'm not quite sure but I'm really pleased with how this one turned out so that was my first um, sew for January and it was one of my make nine for 2022 too so I took that one off quite early so I'm just disappointed I can't wear it yet. I can't wait for the weather to warm up so I can enjoy wearing this one. My second January make is actually a little group of makes and I decided to give making my own knickers a go. 
I've been wanting to try sewing my own knickers for a while. Um, firstly because I find it hard in the shops to get ones that are really comfy and just fit me just right. But also I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to do some scrap busting too. And then Tilly and the Buttons released a new um, underwear pattern. I thought it'd be the great pattern to try to get into making some knickers. This is the pattern here. I got it for Christmas. It's the Iris Knickers pattern, which Tilly and the Buttons released in collaboration with the lingerie brand um, Evie Le Louvre. And I thought this pattern would be a great place to start for learning to sew my own knickers. Firstly, because I find Tilly and the Buttons instructions really good. I like their pictures they include. I find they really hold your hand. So I thought it'd be a great place to start for a new type of um, garment to sew. And also the pattern seems quite comprehensive. It seems to have loads of options built in. So I'll show you the line drawings here. There are three different waistlines included on the Iris knickers. You can make a high waist or a mid rise or a lower rise. And then there are three different leg openings too. Again, a higher leg opening, a mid, mid lower leg, a mid leg opening and a lower leg opening. And they also include instructions on how to finish your knickers either with fold over elastic or with lingerie lace elastic. So yeah, I thought it'd be a great place to start. So also this pattern has a really good size range. There are two size bands available. There's a UK 6 to 24 and a UK 16 to 34. So it's a very size inclusive pattern. So yeah, I really was keen to get started and give this one a go. I decided just to give it a try um, based on my measurements. I decided to go for a 2.5 size. So I graded between a two and a three based on my measurements. And I just thought I'd start out there and see how I got on. And then I had a look at the pattern piece and I compared them to my comfy knickers, my favourite knickers. And I decided to go for um, a mid waistline and a mid leg opening, this sort of option here, and just give it a try. So I made my first pair and found they fit really well. And the only adjustment I decided to make was to just reduce the um, waistline by 1.5 centimetres, just to bring it down slightly to a, um, a length I felt comfortable with. And then I went ahead and made quite a few pairs of pants. And it was a really fun and process, actually. And I'll show you a few pairs of my pants. Um, I finished them all with fold over elastic. This is 16 millimetre fold over elastic that I got from Guthrie Garney. And it went on really well. So this is the pair I made. Um, originally, I made a frayer top in this fabric. And this is my leftover scraps I used to make this pair of black knickers. And then I also made some kind of nautical blue and white stripy white pairs um, using this fabric that I'd originally used to make a dress, a summer dress in. And I finished that with the white fold over elastic. And I've got also some red stripy pairs here. Um, this was used, I used this fabric originally to make a top for my mum and had some leftovers. So I've got one pair like this and I just managed to squeeze another pair out by having to put the stripes on the back the other way around, which I think is quite cute. So I've got a whole little pile here. I think I went on to make about six or seven pairs and they're really comfy actually. And they came together really nicely and I liked how the pattern um, put the pants together. Um, it's, what I think I particularly liked about this pattern is I like how you put the elastic in. Instead of actually measuring the elastic out for the leg openings and the um, waistband and then sort of quartering it and putting it in as one all in the round, this pattern, you attach the elastic before you sew the side seam, so you kind of attach it along and you just pull it to the length you want it. So you kind of, it takes a bit of time, I think, to get an idea of how much you need to pull the elastic to get the right tension for the leg holes. Once you have got the hang of how much you need to pull it and what the tension you need to achieve, it's quite a simple, straightforward way of putting the elastic and it goes in really quickly rather than the quartering method where you have to sort of quarter the leg opening and quarter the elastic and put it in that way. So I quite like the way this pattern puts the elastic in. And I found I needed to pull the elastic a bit harder than I originally thought. Otherwise, the fabric ended up sort of um, stretching out a little bit and the pants didn't end up sort of sitting nice and neatly with the elastic. So... But other than that, once I got the hang of how much to sort of pull the elastic when you're inserting it, they came together really, really um, nicely. They don't use up too much fabric. They're super comfy, so I'm definitely converted to making my own pants. Um, I'll put a picture up so you can see them all together. Um, yeah, they just came out really nicely and were a fun make. And I might give um, it a go with the lingerie elastic too, but the fold over elastic works really well. And it's a really nice, comfy, clean finish. You can see my zigzag stitch there, just about. So yeah, it was a fun little make. And I enjoyed making my pants so much that I then went on to make some pairs for my daughter. Where are they? Here they are. Oh, here's a pattern. So for my daughter, I decided to use a free pattern that was released last year. So it's quite a new pattern still, which is the mini acacia pants pattern by Megan Nielsen Patterns. Megan Nielsen has an adult um, women's free pattern, pants pattern already on the market, which is the acacia pattern. And then she released the mini pattern. And I had considered giving the acacia pattern a go a while ago um, to try and make my own pants. But it's only available in a low rise option. And I wasn't sure 
low rise is not really my thing for pants. Um, I know I could have increased the rise a little bit, but I hadn't got around to it. And then the Irish Knickers pants pattern came out. So I went with that for me. But having built up a bit more confidence on sewing pants using the Iris pattern, I thought I'd give the mini acacia pants pattern a go for my daughter. So here it is. Um, this is a mini acacia pants pattern. Um, it's available just in one variation, which is a lower rise pants pattern. But when I got this downloaded, you just need to sign up to Megan Nielsen newsletter, I think. And then you have access to a whole host of her free patterns, including the acacia adult version and the mini version. And I printed out the pattern pieces and compared them to my daughter's pants and the rise seems quite similar to her pants. So I thought it'd be good to give them a go. And then there are four different um, versions available. Again, it's quite cool because it includes op lots of options for different finishes. So it includes um, sewing the pants with regular elastic, with lingerie elastic, with fold over elastic and with contrast fabric bands. So I guess if you want to use the fabric itself. So I decided to give it a go for my daughter and I used fold over elastic similar to what I'd done for my pants. I managed to get some pink folder of elastic for her, which she was quite pleased about. And again, I made her versions using fabric scraps. So this pair has got these cute little unicorns on and I made her a unicorn dress and that dress still fits her actually. She actually so she can now wear matching pants and dress, which she's quite enjoyed. And I also made her a few pairs using this catacorn fabric. Again, I made a dress of this fabric for her. So her pairs have turned out really well. And you can see I had little lingerie bows on the front because she was struggling to know which way around to put them on. So I got some little lingerie bows online and popped those on to make it a bit easier for her. But the pants sewed up really well. There were a couple of differences in the way these pants come together than the iris knickers. The first one is um, for the iris knickers, you sew on the gusset inside, but the gusset is loose at the front, you can see here. But for the um, acacia pants, you kind of use the burrito method. So you end up with enclosed gusset at both ends. So it's quite a neat finish there. And I think, yeah, quite, quite like that finish, how that comes together. The other thing is for the acacia knickers, they recommend you sew the elastic first and then quarter the leg holes and the waistband when you're attaching the elastic. But I actually ended up using the iris pants method and I just um, ended up judging the elastic myself and pulling it and then closing the side seam afterwards because I found that a bit of a quicker method and I'm not a big fan of the quartering. So that was absolutely fine, but they came together really nicely. I measured my daughter's waist and hips and went based on her size and the pants pattern came out really true to size and she's finding them really comfortable to wear. So that was a nice fun little project and I'll put a picture up so you can see the pairs of pants I made for her too. It's really nice to be able to make pairs in this cute um, fabric that she really likes. And the pink fold over elastic also came from Guthrie Garney. So yeah, that was a nice quick little project. Um, and I'd definitely be making more as she gets bigger and needs larger pants. <laughs> my next make for January, I think might be my favourite make for January. And it's definitely the one I've worn the most to date. And it is a sweatshirt that I made using a new to me sweatshirt pattern that was released last year. And when this pattern was released last year, I really liked the look of it, but I thought I don't really need another sweatshirt pattern. But then I saw some lovely versions coming out and it got towards Christmas and my family asked me what I want. And I thought I'll just pop this on the list because I really, really would like to give it a go, even though I don't really need another sweatshirt pattern. <laughs> and it is this pattern here is the Mile End Sweatshirt by Closet Core Patterns. And it was released as part of their Montreal collection along with a pair of joggers, the Plateau joggers. And I've got that pattern too and I'm really looking forward to giving that a try too. But I just really like this sweatshirt pattern because it has some really unusual details and I thought it looked really cool and quite a lot of fun to sew up. So there's three different versions. It's basically quite a, like a relaxed fit, sort of slouchy sweatshirt with drop shoulders. And then there's two variations with this crew neck and there's also the third option which has a hood and a sort of crossover front and a kangaroo pouch. It's got these really cool style lines at the front. The seams come round to the front to create this kind of diagonal slanted seam at the front, which I thought was really cool. And then what I didn't realise until I actually started tracing out the pattern pieces is that the sleeves have these darts on to give them a bit of shape. And that's really nice too. And there's also a back yoke detail. So some really interesting details on this sweatshirt. And when I traced out the pattern pieces, there are more pieces than I expected because it is a bit of an interesting one. It's got a really good size range too. And there's two size ranges. There's a UK, US 0 to 20 and a US 14 to 32. And it's recommended to be made in thicker fabrics so like cotton fleece, polar fleece, French terry, and that has at least 15% crosswise stretch. So I wanted to sew mine in some fleece back sweatshirt I got this from Mind the Maker. And I'd already a while back made a pair of joggers in this fabric and I really liked it. It's a really nice, substantial, cosy fleece back sweatshirt fabric. And I chose to make mine in this really pretty lilac colour. So here is my sweatshirt and you can see the really lovely, cosy, fleecy fabric. Um, and I really like the fact this fabric also you can get the matching ribbing for it too. I got my fabric and ribbing from Minerva and I'll link it down below. 
I do love to be able to get the matching ribbing. But yeah, it's a really cosy fabric, so I thought it would make a perfect cosy sweatshirt and be just right for the fabric recommendations on this pattern, which recommends a thicker fabric. So yeah, I made my version, I sized down on my version actually, I made, went for the size zero, which is for bust 31, waist 24, hip 33, and I'm 32, 26, 36, which would put me across sizes two to six. But I'd heard online it came up quite oversized, and I'd looked at the finished garment measurements, and that showed the same. I didn't want it to be too oversized, so I thought I'd go with the size zero and see how I got on. I'm really happy with the fit on it, actually. I did make a couple of adjustments to my version. I lengthened the sleeves by an inch, and that's turned out just right for me. You can see the sleeve darts there. They're really cool. I also lengthened the body by three inches and I wasn't sure if that was going to be too much but when I held the pattern piece up against me it looked like it was quite cropped so I thought I'd lengthen by the three inches and if I needed to I can always crop a bit off the bottom at that stage when I'd sewed it up before I attached the bottom band but actually the three inches were needed and I'm quite pleased I did add those three inches on it took a bit of adjusting to get the sort of diagonal seams um just right once you'd kind of added in the extra um three inches but it kind of worked out okay and I'm pleased how it's turned out so yeah this is my version so I've got the ribbing on the neck band and I did I think I did twin needle stitching there on the neck band so I quite like that finish and I've got the ribbing on the cuffs but for the bottom band I decided to go for the fabric itself because I thought I would hold the sort of structure and shape better at the bottom with it being this kind of feature bottom with these cool sort of style lines on there and I did some top stitching because it suggests you can do top stitching at various stages so I top stitched the um back yoke seam down and I also top stitch these style lines that come down the side you can also top stitch more like the um shoulders and things but I didn't add on any more top stitching I thought that'd be enough so that is my version I'm really pleased how it turned out and I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks on it is so cozy and comfy to wear and I really love that it's got a few interesting details to it and I always find closet core instructions really good so it's a really pleasurable sew so I'm really pleased with how it turned out um, and I was really tempted for this fabric just to go for another Megan Nielsen Jarra sweatshirt which is my go-to sweatshirt pattern but I'm really pleased I actually tried something new because I really love this sweatshirt and I've worn it so much already and I've already got the fabric for a second version so that might be in my February makes video because I'm quite keen to get that sewn up while the weather is still cool. So yeah, that's my Mylon sweatshirt by Closet Core Patterns. I am glad that I got that pattern even though I didn't really need another sweatshirt pattern. <laughs> My next make I've got to share with you for January is one I sewed using a big four pattern, which is quite unusual for me. When I started sewing, I did sew a few items using big four patterns, and then I discovered indie patterns, and I kind of got really into sewing indie patterns and never looked back, because I really liked how their instructions did hold your hand, and I liked the style of sewing. So I got out of the habit of using big four patterns. But I've been seeing some really lovely makes using big four patterns on Instagram and I've been thinking I really should give them a go again and I shouldn't be daunted by them so my goal for this year is to give a couple a try and the pattern I made in January is one I put on my make nine 2022 list because I thought that would kickstart me into giving a big four pattern a go and it's this pattern here it is the new look 6682 dress and I chose this pattern just because I thought it looked like a really pretty dress with some interesting details I thought if I had a few interesting details I wasn't too straightforward It'd be nice to try the pattern and see how I got on with the big four instructions, a big four pattern company instructions on something a bit more complicated. So that was my rationale. So it's a really pretty um, woven dress pattern with some lovely details. It's got this collar and it's hard to see. It's kind of a high collar with folds on it to add a pretty detail. Then it's got, or the version A at least, has these sort of billowy sleeves that are kind of gathered into a cuff at the bottom that has a sleeve vent and buttons on. And then there's gathering at the front and back of the bodice and you gather it into this pretty sort of swishy skirt and it's got an invisible zip down the back and there's also this option b with a slightly shorter skirt and with these sort of shorter loose loose sleeves but i really fancy giving option a a go and see how i got on with the sizing and instructions of a big four pattern in terms of sizing it doesn't have the biggest size range ever on this one i think the largest size is for a bust of 40 inches oh here are the line drawings so you can see there's a little um invisible zip down the back with the gathering that's quite hard to see but there it is so yeah i decided i'd just give it a go and i decided to give it a go using um some sort of twirl fabric to hopefully make a wearable twirl so i chose some viscose shelly fabric from minerva this black fabric here it's actually really nice fabric um it's 5.99 a meter so it's quite good value and it's really nice quality actually so i thought it would hopefully make something i could wear if i got the sizing right it's got a nice straight to it and it was nice to work with um so yeah i definitely recommend it i'll link it down below perfect for a wearable twirl so yeah i'm excited to make my version with a high neck and you can see here it's got this really pretty gathering at the waistline i was a bit uncertain on sizing oh the lighting got a bit weird then <laughs> the lighting went a bit weird then with the black i think on the contrast on the screen 
Yeah, I was a bit unsure on sizing, so I had a look at the sizes and then I had a look at the finished garment measurement sizes. And based on the finished garment measurement sizes, I initially decided to size down to a size six because the bust and hip measurements for a size six seemed to be um, give plenty of ease for my size. But then when I got all the pattern piece out, I found the finished garment waist measurement on the skirt pattern piece, which is a bit random um, to have it on there instead of on the envelope. I'd quite like it on the envelope, but it's okay because um, I saw it before I cut anything out. And I saw the finished garment waist measurement for the size six would have been a bit too small for my waist. I think it was pretty much bang on my waist size, so there would have been no ease. So in the end, I decided to go for a six at the bust and then size out to a eight at the waist. And I thought I'd just go for the eight at the hips too, because the hips measurement was less critical because it's a flowy skirt. And I'm actually pleased with how the sizing came out. I think that sizing was just right for me. So I definitely would recommend if you're new to big four pattern companies, having a look and making sure you get all the finished garment measurements before you decide on a size. So yeah, and actually the sewing turned out okay too. Did I make any other adjustments? I lengthened the arms by an inch and I think I needed that to make sure there was a bit of billowiness in the sleeve to give that kind of nice shape to the gathering here. And then, oh, I did lengthen the bodice by half an inch, but I think in hindsight I probably didn't need to, but it does give an extra nice blousy effect how it sits because there's a bit more fabric there. So I guess maybe it was good from that perspective. But it was actually an enjoyable sew and it wasn't as tricky as I expected. I found the instructions okay. The only bit I found the instructions quite limited on was in terms of inserting the invisible zip at the back. And I think the instructions pretty much just said insert the invisible zip as per the invisible zip manufacturer's instructions. So I ended up using a tutorial I'd used before, which is by the Avid Seamstress. I'll link it below. Um, it's a tutorial they'd made for the day dress, which is another dress I've made, which shows how to insert an invisible zip in a very similar situation to this one. So that helped me using that tutorial. But otherwise, I found the instructions good. And it was actually quite an enjoyable sew. It was quite involved. There are quite a few fiddly bits. Um, for example, doing the sleeve vents. Um, you can probably just start to see them there and that sort of thing. Um, and I made a couple of little changes to the pattern. The first thing is the collar piece here, the folded collar piece is cut on the bias. And I found when I attached it to the neckline, it sort of started stretching out a little bit. So I ended up stitching down the folds on the collar just to kind of hold them in place. I think I probably should have um, secured the folds in place before I attached it to the dress. The pattern did recommend that, but I kind of skipped that step, which is a bit naughty. Um, but I think also with the viscose fabric, the collar probably would always, always have been a bit floppy. I think with maybe like a slightly more substantial fabric, like a cotton lawn, it might have hold the, held the folds better. But anyway, I ended up stitching them down. And I quite like how they look. You can probably just see a little bit of stitching there. Um, I quite like that feature on the collar anyway. So that turned out okay. And then the only other thing I changed was I decided to add rouleau loops. Um, hopefully you can just about see them there. Um, instead of thread loops, which the pattern recommends for attaching the buttons, I just cut a couple of little pieces of fabric on the bias, folded them over, stitched them, turned them the right way out and made them into little loops to attach those buttons. I thought that was quite a pretty little finish. I'll put a picture up actually so you can see those little rouleau loops in better detail because I managed to get a picture showing those. And then I went for the slightly shorter length of the skirt um, as per view um, um, B here. I didn't want it really too long. It's still a midi style skirt length, which is something I'm not so, it's not something I'm so comfortable with. I generally go for a shorter skirt, but I think what I'm going to do with this one is hopefully wear it out to dinner at some point, because I think it's quite a dressy dress to wear to dinner and see how I go with the longer length. But I'll put a picture so you can see how it turned out. I'm really pleased I gave a big four pattern a go. It wasn't as daunting as I expected. And I've actually written a blog post talking all about my experiences of this pattern and the adjustments I made and all that sort of thing. So I'll link that blog post down below in case you fancy checking it out. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It kind of gives me a bit of a 70s vibe with the high neck and the billowy sleeves. It's really comfortable to wear actually. I'm glad I went for the size eight on the waist. There's just a nice comfortable amount of room there. So yeah, I'm glad I gave it a go. And I think I'll definitely be looking more at big four patterns in the future. So there may be some more in my future makes videos. So my new look 6682 dress was my final sewing make for January, but I've also got one knitting make to share with you. And it's a knitted cardigan. And I'm really happy with how it turned out actually, although it was a bit of a long one that took to finish. I'll share with you why in a moment. But I made it using this pattern here, or at least I adapted this pattern here. And this is a downtown cardigan by All About Amy. It's a really lovely cardigan pattern. It's actually my first knitted garment I made for myself when I started knitting. And it's a really great one for beginners, I think, because it's knitted mainly in garter stitch and it's pretty much knitted in squares. There's a few increases, but it's quite simple with a bit of rib stitch. 
And also it's knitted using quite large needles and chunky wool. So it comes together quite quickly. So if you're new to knitting um, garments for yourself, it's not too soul destroying because it does sew up, knit up fairly quickly. Um, that's why I decided to give it a go. And my first version I made per the pattern using the chunky wool, and the big needles. And it's lovely, but it's a really, really cosy cardigan. So it's something I'd only get out on the coldest winter days. So I decided to make a couple of versions that were lighter weight that I could wear through more of winter and kind of layer up with my dresses and jeans and that sort of things. And this is my second one I've made. And I decided this time to go for a black one because I thought that'd be great for layering over loads of different things. It'd be really practical. So here it is. So I decided to make a cropped version of the downtown cardigan, as you can see. I also, it's got quite a balloon sleeve to the cardigan. And for my version, I've gone for a slightly less balloon sleeve. So it comes out a little bit, but not to give it a real balloon effect. Because I thought that would be more wearable with lots of different garments. And rather than a statement knitting piece, I guess, more of a layering piece. So yeah, this is my version. And I made it using, so I swapped the needles. Instead of using the 8mm needles specified by the pattern, I used 5mm needles. And instead of the chunky or super chunky yarn needed by the pattern, I can't remember which, definitely a bulky yarn. I made this using an Aran weight yarn. And this is the Merry Fine by We Are Knitters. It's a really lovely Aran weight yarn. Um, I previously made a version of this cardigan in a pink colour. And I'd used the Super Trooper Wool by Wool and the Gang, which is also a merino yarn and also an Aran weight. But it's slightly chunkier and has a bit less drape than this wool. So I had to adapt the pattern again. I thought I'd be able to just reuse my adapted pattern for my first version. But I had to adapt it again for this wool because of the slight differences. But I'm really happy with how it turned out, actually. It was worth the effort of adapting again. So it needed, obviously a lot more stitches than with the chunky wool to get the right width and everything and I had to figure out how long I needed the arms to be and all that sort of thing. And actually with this cardigan I thought I'd finished it, um, I think it might be towards the end of December or early January. I thought I got it all right and I tried it on, it came up too short, it just wasn't right. And I thought, oh, can I just wear it like that? Is it going to be okay? And I thought, no, I need to just, un <laughs> I need to undo it all and restart again. So I un picked all the seams and I um, just yeah undid my cast off stitches and added a few more lines but I had a bit of drama because when I tried to um, when I tried to undo my sleeve seam I managed to unpick the wrong thread and I managed to unravel my sleeve from this end I don't even know how I did it so I had to re-knit one of my sleeves again so I felt like I was having to take a few more steps back than I wanted but it was worth the effort and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out and I'm glad I did spend the time sort of taking off the neckband and taking it back to the point of pattern pieces and adding all those extra lines on to make it the right length. So um, yeah, I'm really pleased how it turned out and I'll put a picture up so you can see it. So yeah, it's just one I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this one. I really enjoy wearing my pink one and the pink one's lovely and goes with quite a few things, but I think a black one will be even more practical and more wearable. And I'd really recommend the Mer Merry Fine by Wee it's really lovely and soft. I find um, real wool can itch my skin, but this is so lovely and soft, it's really nice to wear against my skin as well. So I'm really glad I persevered with this cardigan. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And I really love the Merry Fine wool. It's really lovely and soft, and I love that it's got a bit of drape to it too. I think it's a perfect winter cardigan. So yeah, I'm glad I finished that project. I'm looking forward to moving on to more projects in the future where hopefully I won't have to unpick as much as I did on this one. <laughs> so that knitted cardigan was my final make for January. So... I've had quite a busy month on the making front, I guess. I've yeah made a few items. I've really enjoyed wearing my Mile End sweatshirt and my Iris knickers and my new knitted cardigan. And I'm hoping I'll have a nice occasion out at some point soon to be able to wear my new look 6682 dress. That's definitely, I think, an evening dress rather than a day dress. So yeah, I need an occasion to dress up a bit for that one. And I'm definitely looking forward to wearing my dressing gown when it gets to be a bit warmer too. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about all those makes. And if you have enjoyed hearing about them, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I'd love it if you would consider subscribing. And also, if you press the little bell icon, it means you'll be notified when I bring out my future vlogs. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and maybe get to fit in a bit of crafting. And I will see you again soon. Bye!